Hey guys, coming at you again with another book review. This time I'm going to be talking about Stephen King's collection of novellas, Different Seasons. So for those who don't know the stories in this, um, most of them have been adapted into movies that are both critically acclaimed and unbeloved by audiences. Uh, the first story in this book is called Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, which has, yes, been turned into the Oscar-winning Frank Darabont film The Shawshank Redemption, uh, Apt Pupil, which was also turned into a movie in the 90s, um, The Body, which was turned into the beloved 80s classic Stand By Me, and lastly, another story called The Breathing Method, which as of yet has not had a cinematic adaptation, but is a great story. Um, as far as the writing itself in different seasons of stories are actually some of King's not only best as far as content, but some of his just strongest writing in general. Um, yeah, he is definitely on his A game in this. In fact, the stories in this book are actually, in my opinion, some of the best examples of King's writing and some of his most developed and strongest, like, sentences and structure and, uh, the depth and realism in the stories is on point. Um, King is definitely no slouch, usually injecting realism and dynamic characters even into his horror fiction, but it seems like when he started writing the realistic stories in this, he kind of wanted to strip away the horror stuff and just write normal, everyday drama. Uh, and by that I mean stories where nothing supernatural or spooky or any haunted hotels or anything show up. Um, not to say that stuff isn't great. I love King, and he's written some of the best horror ever written. But it's great to see him step out of something that he's normally known and typecasted for, and just write something just showing that he definitely has chops. Um, and I'm sure a lot of critics were biting back their words when they read this for the first time when it was published. Um, but yeah, uh, for those who don't know... Shawshank Redemption is about a guy inside a prison who, for over the course of several years, befriends an inmate named Andy. Andy is secretly plotting an escape, and he does it in a very off-kilter way. Um, and eventually, when the main protagonist of the story is narrating it, Red, gets out, he is implied to have gone to meet Andy at the end. Uh, Apt Pupil is about a normal kid who lives a normal, ordinary goody two-shoes life in the suburbs who meets a former Nazi who kind of leads him down the path of corruption, stealing his innocence basically, and showing him a darker side of life. The Body is a story which was turned into the film Stand By Me and was about a bunch of kids in the 60s who set off on a journey through the woods across a few counties, across train tracks to find a corpse of a kid. Um... And it's also about so many other things, like the end of childhood and the onslaught of adolescence into adulthood, about how important it is to know who you are in your past, but also grow from it and become a better person and a stronger person, as well as facing both people and obstacles alike head on. And The Breathing Method is a very odd story within a story. It's the most overtly horror story within this set, and is, well... Uh, about a type of club, a mysterious, almost supernatural club, where people go to tell stories. And the story within the story is about a woman who's so determined to give birth to her baby that she does so even in death. Um, <clears throat> the only story that hasn't been adapted, as I've said, is The Breathing Method, but all the other stories in there are returning to movies. And great as those movies are, and fantastic cinematic adaptations in their own right, they don't nearly do come close to doing stories in this book justice. Um, like I've said a minute ago, this is some of King's strongest writing. Like, just, not only just his content, which these are some of his best stories he's ever published, but as far as just, like, like his A-game is on point in these stories, like, I've read a lot of King. He's one of my favorite writers, and I've read a great, great deal of his output. But it's it's these stories that I often think of when I think of King's best. When I think of, like, King at the top of his game, I think certain novels, like 112263 and It, some of his short stories, like The Jaunt, and I think 
these stories in this collection. And these are, for the record, my favorite novellas that he's published um, in his career. Which is saying a lot because he's published other great uh, collections of novellas like Full Dark, No Stars, and Four Past Midnight. But uh, Different Seasons to me is the top collection of novellas for King. Um, what can I say? I mean, King is a very, very talented writer. That goes without saying. And he's a writer who's earned his popularity through writing real writing. Who writes actual depth with an actual passion for the craft. He writes realistic and interesting characters. He writes likable characters. He writes characters that you love to hate. He writes interesting stories, whether they be horror or otherwise. He writes actually a very wide depth of uh, writing. Um, he, you know, he spreads across more genres than he's given credit for. Um, He's written realistic dramas like the ones here. Um, he's written realistic uh, dramas and novels like Dolores Claiborne and Gerald's Game. Um, he's written thrillers like the Bill Hodges trilogy. He's written fantasy like the Dark Tower series. He's written a number of great horror works like Carrie, The Shining, Doctor Sleep, Salem's Lot, It, The Stand, uh, to name a few, um, he's even dabbled in science fiction with works like 112263 and Under the Dome. This guy is a fantastic writer, and all of the ones I've listed are actually novels well worth reading, some of them of which are my favorites of all time. But I want to talk about the novellas in here. If you haven't read the stories in here and have just seen the movies, please do yourself a favor and check them out. These are... These are Prime King. Like, the only story in here I think is weak, and I don't even think it's that weak, but compared to the others, it's apt people. But, even apt people is a lot better than what most writers can do in a whole lifetime. Yeah, I know I sound like just another fanboy sucking King's dick and talking about how great he is, but I genuinely find his writing to be compelling. He knows how to write a sentence, he knows how to write a story, he knows how to invest you and engage you into what's going on. He uses an active writing voice. He creates living, breathing characters. He creates interesting, suspenseful scenarios. Uh, and they can range from everything from horrific moments to the simplest actions, creating so much tension for a scene. Um, and he all, does it all so effortlessly that I, he makes me want to pick up a pencil and start writing. And that's the best kind of writers that create things that make you yourself want to write and tell stories. And the stories in here are definitely an example of that. Um, I can't recommend this book enough. I know I may talk about things I like on this series a little too much and don't really do as many negatives or reviews as I can or should do to balance things out. But fuck it, this is my show. I want to talk about stuff I like. <laughs> and something I really like is Different Seasons. But yeah, check out this book, uh, read the stories in it, and be like me and read them several, several times. Because that's the beauty of them. That's the beauty of any well-written story. Not only is it universal and appealing, you know, but it's just so damn entertaining. You just want to read it over and over. And that's what all the best writers do. So, do yourself a favor. Buy a copy, whether on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble. And just dive in. Because writing this good, you know... You know, it definitely deserves to be read. And, you know, I think a lot of popular writers are really just overrated. But I definitely don't think that about King. King definitely earns his place in pop culture. And I'm not the first to say this, but I definitely won't be the last when I say that years from now, King will be read the way people read Faulkner or Steinbeck. Because... He's on the level of those guys. He may not be considered as serious or literary, but given enough time, people will understand and appreciate his brilliance. And uh, hopefully I'll see that in my lifetime. So anyways, thanks for listening to me ramble on about how much I love Stephen King and how much I love the stories in this. But I wanted to do an episode on this because these stories are worth reading. They're worth talking about. They're worth discussing. And I want more people to read this. I want to start a dialogue. 
Um, because as stories go, just longish works of fiction that are a little longer than short stories, but less longer than novels. These are fantastic. And definitely show the range and depth of what a novella can be. And it's really cool seeing that. And leave it to a writer's talented as King to pull it off. So, again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. You guys are fantastic. Check out more stuff on my channel. And if you like what I do, please subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. So I'll be back soon with another video. I'm trying to do this as regularly as possible in between working and other stuff. So, until then, I will see you guys next time. Later.